those who are only or merely compassionate and self-sacrificing and naive and exploitable cannot call forth the genuinely righteous and appropriately self-protective anger necessary to defend themselves. If you can bite, you generally don't have to. When skillfully integrated, the ability to respond with aggression and violence decreases rather than increases the probability that actual aggression will become necessary. But you have to have the capacity to do it. You have to have the courage to have the capacity to express this as a defense mechanism against the world. Otherwise, you get trampled on. People walk all over you. You'll become a mere shell of of who you could be. Naive, harmless people usually guide their perceptions and actions with a few simple axioms. People are basically good. No one really wants to hurt anyone else. The threat, and certainly the use of force, physical or otherwise, is wrong. These axioms collapse, or worse, in the presence of individuals who are genuinely malevolent. Because those who aim to harm have become specialized to prey on people who think precisely such things. That's what they don't understand. Under such conditions, the axioms of harmlessness must be retooled. In my clinical practice, I often drew the attention of my clients who think that good people will never become angry to the stark realities of their own resentments. So now, it's like a mirror reflecting back on them. They realize, wait, I have resentments. This is the form of anger. This is the form of negative emotion that I so despised and didn't want to be a part of. I'm capable of this same uh, emotion that I so despise, then what am I? It's very confronting. No one likes to be pushed around, but people often put up with it far too long. So I get them to see their resentment first as anger, and then as an indication that something needs to be said, if not done, not least because honesty demands it. When naive people discover the capacity for anger within themselves, they are shocked, sometimes severely. A profound example of that can be found in the susceptibility of new soldiers to post-traumatic stress disorder, which often occurs because of something they watch themselves doing rather than because of something that has happened to them. They react like the monsters they can truly be in extreme battlefield conditions, and that revelation of that capacity undoes their world. And no wonder, perhaps they assume that all of history's terrible perpetrators were people totally unlike themselves. Perhaps they were never able to see within themselves the capacity for oppression and bullying. And that's the thing. We all have that capacity. That is one of the biggest lessons Jordan Peterson has taught me. He's taught me that we, have, we all have the capacity for that evil. To be the most terrible perpetrators of history. People look back on the Holocaust, and this is an example Jordan uses, so this is not my example. People go back and think we think about the Holocaust and what a terrible atrocity it was to persecute so many people. Okay, true. But what if we were born in that time? And what if you were on the other side? What if you weren't a minority? What if you weren't a Jew? You think, no, I could never do something like that. You don't think people just like us had the same feelings just like us 50, 60, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, just continuing on from the previous atrocities. You don't think these people have thought, I could, no, I could never do something like that. Yet they were confronted with a choice. They were confronted with a choice to be malevolent and they chose it. We all have the capacity to perform the worst atrocities imaginable. And you need to imagine that, and you need to think about that. Because if you don't, I don't even know if you don't. What happens if you don't? I can't even articulate it. I cannot even articulate what happens if you don't. Jordan's talked about this much better than I can articulate. I can't do it. Not right now. You need to think about it. The same way you need to, we need to think about death and suffering and Memento mori. Remember that you will die. You know, the same way we need to think about that, we need to think about and put ourselves in the perspective and visualize what it would actually be like to perform the worst atrocities imaginable. And only then, I think that's it, only then can you actually be good is once you dip your toe into evil. Only then can you be good. 
But when the awakening occurs, when the once naive people recognize in themselves the seeds of evil and monstrosity and see themselves as dangerous or at least potentially their fear decreases, this was me. They see that they have the ability to withstand because they are terrible too. They see they can and must stand up because they begin to understand how generally monstrous they will become, otherwise feeding on their resentment, transforming it into the most destructive of wishes. To say it again, there is very little difference between the capacity for mayhem and destruction, integrated, and the strength of character. This is one of the most difficult lessons of life. It is. And when I heard Jordan say it, my whole perspective shifted on how I perceive evil and good. One of the biggest revelations I've had in the last five years was at the hands of this man, at the words of this man.